Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Cal Killer from Boiling Steam. Today is a very special day. And the reason for that is because I was given a laptop courtesy of System76. Thank you for the review unit. This is the Serval WS. I just got in the mail today. The shipping was very prompt. It was shipped yesterday and I got it today. So, awesome shipping there. So, I'm just going to go ahead and unbox this and see what we got here. Just going to have to be real careful how I unbox this. Because unfortunately, I am going to need to return it to them. You can't see my cat, but he's watching intently as I'm unboxing this. Then we got the sides. Okay, this side will go up, why not this? Okay, cool. Don't cut it, packaging is reusable. Unfold and slide out. Okay, so the box is definitely much larger than the laptop itself. Let's see here. What will you make? I will make a review. That's what I will be doing. Okay, so we got a we got our charger there. Looks like we got a couple of uh, stickers to go along with it. Oh, what is this? Little envelope from System 76. Okay, it looks like we got some more decorations that we can put on the laptop and a welcome letter from System 76. Oh, we got another sticker. I probably can't put any stickers on this laptop since it's a review unit, so I'll just leave it the way that it is. So let's see what we got here. That is a nice finish. I think that's mate. Wow, I like that keyboard. The dimensions is 1 by 2 inches by 14 by 2.1 inches by 10.16 inches. The base weight is 5.95 pounds, so just a little under 6 pounds. With the customization parts that I got, it may be a little bit heavier. So if we look on the left side we have a Kensington lock, a gigabit ethernet port, two USB 3.0 ports, a micro SD card slot. Towards the front we have the LED indicators. And then on the right side we have the headphone jack, the microphone jack, and a USB 2.0 port. And if we look at the back we've got a USB 3.1 Type-C port. We've got an HDMI port, a MIDI display port, and a power jack. Now because, unfortunately, this unit does not have a display port, I am not currently able to test the valve index on it, but I did order a cable that will allow me to connect it to a regular display port. So I'm just waiting for that to come in the mail. This is quite a beast. We are looking at a third generation Ryzen 7 processor, 3700X, that's clocked at 3.6 GHz. It can be overclocked to 4.4 GHz, 8 cores and 16 threads. We have a NVIDIA RTX 2070, so this laptop is capable of ray tracing. It's got 8 GB of virtual memory, 2304 CUDA cores, 32 GB of memory, and one terabyte of NVMe storage. The display is 15.6 inches, it's 1080p, a refresh rate of 144 Hz. We have Pop! OS 20.10 pre-installed on this. As for Wi-Fi, it's an Intel card that's Wi-Fi 6, also is capable of Bluetooth. The webcam is, I believe, one megapixel. 
capable of capturing is 720p and the battery is a six cell battery at 62 watts per hour. Let's take a look at this. Oh, I like that red glow underneath the keys. So even my cat got in on this. Yeah, say hi to the camera. Alright, so like I said, we have Pop OS 20.10 pre-installed, so we just select our language here. We are in the US of A. Default keyboard. And we can encrypt our hard drive. That's pretty cool. So I will go ahead and create a password here. Password is a palindrome. I don't know what that means. Alright, let's we'll forget it. I guess it's going to partition the drive, extract some files, so I'll just let it do its thing. The timing is off. I definitely need to check that. I am from New England, so I will need to change it to Eastern Standard Time. That's probably what the time is in Denver, Colorado right now. That's where this laptop was shipped from. Okay, let's go ahead and restart the device. One thing I've noticed is that this trackpad feels very smooth. It is smooth as a baby's bottom. It's, it's absolutely terrific. Notice the shift key is pretty small. I've, I've been pressing the up arrow key to put in shift. And now i got to kind of figure that out where the shift key is. We are all done setting up Pop! OS. So now I will get some updates installed. Get OBS Studio installed so I can start recording from the screen. And then we can get some benchmarks going, install some games and see how well this thing runs. Okay, so now I am on the Pop! OS desktop. I just installed OBS Studio. Set the brightness on the keyboard. They're white right now on the keys, but uh, I'm wondering if I can get them to red like it was when it was booting up. So all I'm doing right now is just running some updates. There were over 70 packages to upgrade, uh, 76 actually. In fact, let's see what we have for an NVIDIA driver here. Oops. Dash SMI. Okay, 455.38. Oh, not bad. Remember, we got a RTX 2070 in here, so this laptop is a no joke when it comes to gaming. I'm noticing the battery is going by fairly quickly when I first set the computer up and set the user account and everything, the battery was at 80%. And after about half an hour or so of usage, it's already at 45%. Though I will mention that the LCD screen was set to full brightness, so I set it to half brightness and hopefully that'll improve the battery life a little bit. It is something you probably want to keep in mind is that you're probably going to get a short battery life out of this. Oh, look at this. It already jumped to or hopped down to 41%. So, uh, yeah, definitely something you got to watch out for, especially when you're gaming. It's going to it's going to drain that battery quick. Now, this distribution that comes pre-installed with the Serval WS is System 76's Pop OS. For those who aren't aware, Pop OS is Using elements of Ubuntu, it is based off of Ubuntu. Pop! OS is more tailored for System 76's devices. And it's also more bleeding edge in terms of a release cycle for getting updates to your packages. So it is it is more of a uh, more of a bleeding edge experience than on a standard Ubuntu distribution. And that's something that I particularly like because I like to have bleeding edge software. You notice if we type in snapd... The Snap Daemon is not pre-installed with Pop! OS. So those of you who are kind of weary of snaps or trying to stay away from them, you can be rest assured that you don't have the Snap Daemon installed on Pop! OS, but you can install SnapD anytime you want. What System76 is doing is they're encouraging the use of flat packs rather than snaps. So APT is starting to become, it's gradually becoming less and less of a thing because Canonical is pushing snaps more and more as time goes on. And so what System76 is encouraging users to do with Pop! OS is use flat packs instead of APT or snaps. So let's see what kind of software we got here. I know uh, OBS Studio was not pre-installed. I installed that myself. But uh, it looks like we got the basics. We got our Firefox web browser. We got our email client. We got LibreOffice. We got the Pop Shop which again is using flat packs rather than snaps. We have 
our NVIDIA settings because the NVIDIA driver is pre-installed. Got our terminal, we got VLC, all the basics. So we got a USB flasher, an archive manager, video player. I guess we can check the weather if we wanted to, or text editor. That's pretty much all there is to it. And I, I like that, it's pretty bare bones. So it means we can install the software that we want and less software that we have to remove in the event we don't want them. Let's see here, we got uh, System76 driver, that's, that's interesting, I wonder what that's for. Okay, so it's telling us what our model is, it's telling us uh, what version of Pop! OS we're running, and I guess we can install the graphics drivers if we want to, or maybe just more than graphics drivers, probably the Ethernet drivers and Intel drivers, all that other jazz. Oh, come on, how the frig do I minimize this? How do I minimize this in GNOME? <laughs> I'm pretty new to GNOME, sorry guys, just bear with me for a minute. Uh, one thing I will note is, traditionally to launch the terminal, it's Control-Alt-T, but on Pop! OS it's a little different, it's Super plus T. And Super being where, where the Windows key is normally located, so Super and T will bring up the terminal. One thing I do find interesting is the charging jack is located on the back of a laptop. Typically, I find the charging jack is either on the left side or the right side of the laptop towards the back, but on either the left or the right side. It's a little weird to me. I Maybe it's just me not being used to that. It is something that I will note that it's simply on the back. Well, if we look at how... System76 arranges the hard disk. It looks like we've got a 4 gigabyte swap partition, a 4 gigabyte recovery partition, it looks like a 500 megabyte EFI partition, and the rest gets assigned to the file system partition. And it looks like we have a Samsung 970 Evo Plus M.2 drive as formatted as extension 4. So for the life of me, I could not get Mango HUD to appear on screen, even though I have it installed. So unfortunately, you will not be able to see the stats as I run these benchmarks, but uh, here I have F1 2018 on the ultra high preset at 1080p. And uh, let's see what we got for benchmarks here. Bear in mind this is recording so the frame rate will be affected a little bit. I will benchmark again with recording off. So as you can see from these benchmarks, the Servo WS is more than capable of handling modern AAA games. Now, granted, F1 2018 is a couple of years old. I wouldn't imagine there's much of a difference between this and the 2020 version, though. And if we look at the ultra-high preset, we're getting over 100 frames per second on average. That's amazing. And you'll notice towards the right of the graph that I enabled game mode from Feral, after installing that and notice that the frame rate goes even higher. So on average on ultra high we're getting about 115 frames per second. So it's uh, a little more subtle on the ultra high preset but on the lower presets you can definitely see a big difference when we have game mode enabled. I do have more benchmarks to come in my more thorough review that I will write on Boiling Steam in the coming weeks. So. Uh, this video is more so to demonstrate the what the out-of-the-box experience is like. And uh, so far, I really like this laptop. It's definitely more than capable of handling AAA games at ultra-high presets, at least at 1080. Um, I've yet to test 4K. It's probably capable of doing pretty well at 4K. I noticed that when the charger is disconnected and I was running these benchmarks, the frame rate tanked to 15 frames per second. I gotta have to change the power settings on this laptop a bit to see if I can get that same gaming performance without having it charged. 
That'll be it for today. Like I said, I'll have a much more in-depth review of the Serval WS on boiling steam. Thanks again for watching this video, and that's all.